AFTV. Dan, first of all, good to be back at a football game. So that's that's the positive. But um, the negative is uh, it was, it looked like the same old stuff we were seeing before the lockdown and beyond the lockdown, to be honest. Man, 38 games of last season and nothing has changed. I've never seen a team so underprepared for the start of a season. How can we be surprised by this, mate? This has been 16 years of trusting a process of our owner who does not give a damn, who's neglected this club. We've got a manager who is clueless, right? And let's not blame the manager because this is not, nobody wanted this guy. Nobody wanted this guy in place. And we've been given him with a novice board, with a novice owner, with a novice in Edu, who's apparently jet skiing in Spain when he should be buying players because I saw a League Cup side out there, right? Because that's what it was, Rob. We had Balogun, we had Martinelli, we had young players coming on. And Reese Nelson coming on, yeah? I was excited by some of the youth, but when you look at it, you think, this, this, let's not blame these kids. We should have done business in this summer, where the window is still open, which everyone keeps going on about, to get this sorted. This is absolute neglect of a football club. I'm seeing my club that I love go down and down and down. And we've come here today, nobody was confident, Rob. Everyone was, oh, we should win this game, should we? Really, with this team? Do you think this team is good enough with this manager? I'll give you two dates, October 2009 and October or November 2020. They were the two dates. The first date, I questioned this ownership. November 2020, I questioned this manager. And everyone gave me a stick. Oh, Dan Potts is so negative. Dan Potts is so negative about this manager. Dan Potts is so negative about this process. Trust this process. Now, I'll tell you what Dan Potts was realistic. My eyes do not lie to me. I have seen this manager in so many bad states. And tonight, I see him clueless. And actually, for the first time, I felt sorry for him. I'm sitting there thinking, should I be having to go at you or should I be having to go at the Cronkies? And I've decided it's the Cronkies I'm having to go at now because he should be given some, he should be given some backing. And he's told me, Arteta, that he's being backed. I haven't seen it, Rob. We bought a 50... Let, let, you know, let, let, just to read it back, we've got to give a bit of mitigation tonight. You know, just before the game, you know, we, we only heard it today. No Aubameyang. I know he hasn't had a great preseason, but no Aubameyang, no Lacazette. You know, there's no Partey, no Gabriel. We're missing a lot of very big players. And then on top of that, like you said, no real new signings. And to be fair to the new signings, I thought Lokonga yeah. looked a very accomplished on, player please. out there. You know, but yeah, like you said, they, you know, before the game and I was talking to fans, there wasn't a lot of confidence around when they saw how many players and how many big time key players were missing. I, listen, yes, we had players out. But here's the, here's the responsibility of Edu and Arteta to sort that out, Rob. Mm. If you've got party going out last weekend, let's get a midfielder in. If you've got a Bamiyang and Lacazette who aren't firing, let's get a striker in. If you've got Ben White as your priority at £50 million, pounds, if you think that's a priority signing, when apparently we've got the third best defence in the league last season, how is Ben White a priority signing? And by the way, it hasn't done no good, because apparently our defence is, is brilliant. Last well, The defence was shocking today, and, and another bad. worry was the goalkeeper, wasn't it? Because, I don't know, I mean, the first goal... Near post, they always say, don't get beat. I, I thought he should have done better there. And then the second guy, I, I don't know, I was thinking at first, was it a foul on him or something? He was he was caught, caught in no man's land. I mean, they'd done their homework, didn't they? They were very direct. Lots of, you know, ball up to Ivan Tony, lots of second balls. You know, long throws in. I mean, I, they had the stripes on. I thought he was stoked. But you know what? Fair play to them. It worked. Yeah, you're saying manager gone ASAP. Let's be real. The manager ain't going nowhere. It's the first game of the season. He's going to be given time, at least, to get it right. What does he have to do for you? What does he have to change? Show, show me a style of play. Show me a style of play. I've not seen one in 18 months. Show me a style of play. Show me what you're trying to do to progress. I've not seen any understanding of what formation or tactics or style of play you're trying to give me. Everybody says we're high intensity, off the ball pressure. I can't see any of it. I cannot see any creativity in this side whatsoever. Yeah, the shots we had today, we had Pepe who had a great save, great, great save. Smith Rowe, I thought should have done better, but good chance. Then I'm struggling. <laughs> then I'm struggling. Mm. To have two shots against Brentford or whatever it was in, in, in terms of clear cut chances, we're struggling, Rob. I, I, I can't understand what he's doing, this manager. I really can't. And every time I say it, he's not just he's loved by these fans, he's protected by these fans. I didn't see Unai Emery protected by these fans, or Arsene Wenger at the later years protected by these fans. You say anything bad about this manager, all of a sudden it's like you're a bad fan. Trust the process. I'm not trusting this process because I haven't trusted the process for 16 years since his ownership's been in charge. This ownership of the responsibility for putting this guy in charge when he's not ready. And I'm done with it, Rob. 100% done with it.